for giving me the opportunity to talk a bit about piloted driving as being a part of an entire connected world. As a CV of the rings, I'm working for a famous German car manufacturer called uh, Audi. And piloted driving is somehow already on um, a hype cycle. We it's, a, it's a good chance to talk on conferences like this one today. And we do expect a somehow a breakthrough of that technology uh, within the upcoming five up to 10 years. Uh, why the hell does it take so long, might you think? Um, just look back to the history. We're coming from a driver-only system. We right now have a, f a huge bunch of assisted systems like, for instance, cruise control. And by end of next year, with the new generation of our flagship um, A8, we're going to introduce the first partly autonomous driving system. That means even more concretely that you simply can drive from a German autobahn or on a highway with full hands off up to a speed of roughly 60 kilometers an hour. And that is a comfort issue if you just think about on traffic jams or the traffic situation on highways. So 2030 roughly will be the situation when we have fully autonomous cars. That means the entire automotive industry somehow changes completely. To get there, you need to test um, the technology on the one side. But even more critical is the entire story about the trust of the consumer on one side. Just think about driving on a road completely hands off and the car is somehow doing what it wants to do. And the second story is about the legal authorities. You simply need to get the permission of the legal authorities or the government to do so. Therefore, we heavily test that technology on racetracks and on normal roads. And we already entered that story with a car called Shelley in 2009, <coughs> climbing up the Pikes Peak Hill in the United States fully autonomously. Second step was in 2012 with a car called James in Nevada, where we got as the first uh, OEM manufacturer the permission to drive on the roads uh, of the United States fully autonomously. And just last year in uh, Hockenheim, that's a famous German racetrack, we managed that a car runs the entire racetrack without being a driver inside in a somehow a very uh, performing time, roughly with a top speed of 240 kilometers an hour, always on the ideal line on the racetrack. And the journey somehow proceeded early this year when there was the famous consumer electronics show in uh, Las Vegas. We managed um, the entire trip from San Francisco to Las Vegas, full hands off, inviting 17 journalists and a fleet of 20 cars, A7 in this case, completely autonomously. And last but not least, also once again, in the United States on the Sonoma racetrack, um, we used a high-end performing car, that's an RS7, and we had somehow a battle man against the machine, and two-thirds of the semi-professional driver simply failed in comparison on the battle to the car in performing the best lap time on that racetrack. So that's the technology. Main message is we are ready somehow. The technology is there. And why the hell are we entering that story? Some things are somehow um, kind of obvious. And fully autonomous car simply does not make so many mistakes. 90% of all accidents are simply caused by human errors. It's also a story about efficiency. Just think about fully autonomous cars. They need less space, less infrastructure, and it ho has also a huge positive effect on the story about fuel consumption. The third beneficial part of that story is flexibility. Just think about autonomous mobility grids. I give you an example on that. New York has roughly 30,000 yellow caps at the moment, just think about an autonomous yellow cap fleet, then you need simply just need 10,000 yellow caps and the average waiting time of for a cap from today's five minutes drops down to 30 seconds. So that's a huge uh, beneficial story overall for the customers, but also for the infrastructure. And for sure, it means comfort. Just think about today's traffic situation in Dublin this morning. It took me personally two hours almost 
for just simply traveling from my hotel six kilometers away from here to this place two hours for six kilometers, uh, but steering still the car. Just imagine what you can do with two hours, just hands off. I mean, sleeping, communicating, whatever you want. At the end, it's one of the highest luxury goods in today's time that is simply the time. And last but not least, it's a story about fun and emotion. We are a car manufacturer which is somehow proud of having very emotional cars. And we are putting um, influencers, innovative people in our cars. Let them experience how it feels driving on a racetrack fully autonomously. And I would like to share with you a short video on one of these guys experiencing uh, the story of autonomous driving on the Barcelona racetrack. It's a bit like a roller coaster. I mean, it's not uh, an issue for daily usage. It should be different, but it shows somehow the potential of the technology. Right now, coming to the business potential, I mean, on average, a consumer, a user of a car spends on average at least one hour a day in his car, roughly most of the time in traffic jams in somehow strange or very stressy situations. So the question is simply, what is the effect on behavior and the business? As we start with the behavior, definitely we change the behavior of the user of the car. If we ask today the people, um, most of the people, roughly 50%, okay, I would use that extra time in the car simply to relax, to sleep, or just to dream. Um, entertainment comes second, roughly 30%, uh, and work only between 17 and 37 percent. It's a bit strange that um, men tend to work even more in the car and women prefer to relax or to simply entertain. But what let's see what reality brings to that numbers. The more uh, crucial part is the story about business. And uh, we do not see piloted driving or autonomous driving as simply just a standard option on a car. It's the biggest game changer probably within the automotive industry. And I would say it eats somehow electric mobility, let's say for breakfast. It's the biggest disruption which we are going to enter right now in the upcoming years. Just think about uh, if you have extra time, there's a potential of even more than 10% media consumption. That's money, not money for us maybe, but money for third parties in that case, so that also means that we need to have a close connection or relation with uh, third parties as being a car manufacturer. The second thing is that we do see it as an opportunity to simply disrupt the entire logistics and transportation industry. Just think about what happens with my car just right now parked in a parking slot. It could be part at the moment of an autonomous peer-to-peer -peer sharing or simply deliver some goods to from A to B. So there is a lot, a lot of different opportunities what a car in the future can simply do. Because 95% on average, a car is simply unused a day. So it's not a very efficient good at the moment, but it could be part of an entire ecosystem. And that's the thing we are heavily working on, seeing the car not only autonomous, not only being a kind of a status symbol, but becoming more or less a part of an, an entire connected ecosystem within the future. 
So therefore, we work with so-called opportunity maps. Once again, at the heart, it's piloted driving. And for sure, we do see all these first layer beneficial points like, as I already said, more time, more fun, more safety, more comfort, and more flexibility. But definitely, it has the potential, the car, in the upcoming years to simply disrupt other industries like the retail industry. Just think about stories like what happens if the goods of a retail store in Dublin, in a city, become somehow mobile and delivers the goods in front of my house. One example, the second example is just think about standard business trips, for instance, from Munich to Berlin. If I have tomorrow morning a meeting in Berlin, what I'm actually doing is in the evening I take a flight, a domestic flight, taking an inner city hotel, maybe in the future I get rid of these two things, no more inner city hotels, no more domestic flights, I simply take my car or my car takes me, four o'clock in the morning I have a sleep until I'm in Berlin for a sleep and I'm there and afterwards I go back down to Munich. That is the future, it, so it sounds a bit crazy in the year 2015 for some people, especially in the old economy or automotive industry, but there's definitely a huge room for opportunities. And then another example is just think about insurance. If a car drives fully autonomously and it does not make any mistake, what happens with your insurance rate? That's another example. And there are many other examples at the end. And so that brings us to that opportunity map and it's in our hands because we are in control of the car and being or need to be part of that, uh, what I already said, being or developing an ecosystem with uh, the local authorities, with the players in the infrastructure, with the traditional transportation industry, as well uh, with players from the digital world. So just think about Uber, for instance. Today you have Uber drivers. Maybe tomorrow you have, as I said, an autonomous fleet, hopefully with Audis, and being part of that new business. So that means we are developing or transforming our traditional business via pilot to driving from just simply selling cars to the face of usage and simply using cars as being more effective and more efficient. And last but not least, it means for us it's the dream to simply deliver the customer or the consumer 60 minutes additional on a day, 60 minutes. Once again, that's a hell of money, what you could do. And the car becomes one certain point, or it's the heart of the entire system. And we do believe that the car in 15, 20 years is probably the best place on the planet. It's the only place where you can be on your own beside the restroom and the shower, where you have just you as you are, think about anything, sleep, relax, and if you want to listen to some music, you can do it if you want. If you want to communicate with other people, you can do if you want. But if you say, no, I simply want to be disconnected, just enter the car. So I personally think that the car has a very, very positive future in, in the upcoming years, pushed or even being enabled by the story of pilot driving. So once again, that is not just the standard option, it is the biggest chance for the automotive industry to be once again on the top of being one of the most established uh, drivers of innovations, but we cannot do it on our own. We need to simply connect even more closer with guys like you or with other innovative industry because that big story is definitely a bit big too just for us. That is, once again, the story. And there, I would like to say thank you. I managed to be right in time. Thanks for joining us, or me personally. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the rest of the day. And maybe I'll see some of you tonight at Dublin downtown. Thank you.